One of my favorite computers I've ever built was my 3D printed Nintendo GameCube. It's a Core i5, it's an RX 460, and it emulates all of my GameCube and Wii games just fine, as well as running most of the stuff in my Steam library and watching movies at home. It's perfect. However, if you're one of Nintendo's lawyers, you might not be thinking it's perfect how I ended up getting GameCube and Wii games on my PC. So, to prove that I wasn't illegally downloading and to show you guys that you can do this at home, I'm going to teach you how to get Wii and GameCube games onto your hard drive. So there's two methods I'm going to show you. The first is the old-fashioned way, the way we did it back in my day. And despite what those YouTube commenters think, no, I'm not 18, I am much older than that. I do have a day that was way back when. So the way we used to do it is you would take your DVD, and because the GameCube only fit miniature DVDs, we had to cut them down to size. And then once you've done that, you go ahead and put it in your GameCube. If it doesn't close, then just use a little bit of gentle pressure. And then just turn the GameCube on and wait for it to make a little bit of smoke. And right before it catches fire, you want to grab it, probably with a pair of oven mitts if you still have any feeling left in your hands. And then take the SATA part of your hard drive and just get that in there nice and gentle. All right, and then you're just gonna let that sit for a couple hours, and in the end, anything that could have been read from that DVD is now on that hard drive. By now you've probably figured out that nothing on that DVD is readable, so nothing will have actually transferred to the hard drive, and you are completely right, I've been pulling your leg this whole time. But in all seriousness, you're not going to use a GameCube, you're going to use a Wii console, but you will also need a GameCube or Wii Classic controller to go along with it. So the first thing you need to do is you need to install the homebrew channel on your Wii. This has nothing to do with distilling alcohol, this means running custom applications on your console that would otherwise be locked down. So the attack I use is called the letter bomb attack, and basically, Instead of going through a really long video showing you all the steps, I'm just going to link to someone else's write-up down in the description below, which is pretty easy to follow along with, and I recommend you follow it too. But basically, it's going to exploit the Wii message board to install the Homebrew channel on your Wii. Once you have the Homebrew channel installed on your Wii, then you need to install a disk ripper program. The one I'm using is called CleanRip and you have to use a GameCube controller to control it. So once you get that homebrew app running on your Wii, now we can actually start to get some disks saved onto a flash drive. So you're going to use one of the two USB ports in the back of your Wii, and you will want your drive formatted as NTFS if you are going to be downloading any Wii images to it. If you're just doing GameCube, then FAT32 is fine. And as you can see on screen, this is me going through the process of ripping a disc. It's pretty straightforward, not a lot of options to choose from. And at the end of it all, you will begin to get your entire collection of Wii and GameCube discs moved over onto your computer. So now that you know how to get Wii and GameCube discs onto your computer, where do you go to find these discs legally? Well, the first places I would look for a good deal would be Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, because that way you don't have to pay for shipping and there's a good chance that the disc probably still works. Now, short of that, you could also check eBay. No, not that one. The real eBay. And you could also look at institutions such as Half Price Books, Movie Trading Company, GameStop. You get the idea. So hopefully you found this video super useful. If you did, make sure to give it a like, make sure you're subscribed, 
And if you want more videos about emulation or other computer stuff, let me know in the comments what you want to see, and I'll make a video about it. Thanks so much. See you in the next one.